rest in peace to Love Bug Starsky, hip hop pioneer, hip hop legend, MC, DJ, contributor, originator of the word hip hop, somebody that the notorious B.I.G. shouted out and paid homage to on one of his biggest hit records. And um, just somebody that had a lot of passion and a lot of love for our culture. I had the opportunity to interview the man that doesn't do interviews at the 2005 Just Those Mixtape Awards. It was the biggest night of my life as a host. And my experience dealing with Love Bug Starsky, it was, uh, like I said, it was very interesting. Check it out. This award means a, a hell of a lot to me because they presented it to me before I die and before I do wrong, you know? Um, just on Mixtape Awards, he's been doing it for 10 years, and I recognize that, and this is the first award that really means anything to me. MTV, BET, uh, and so on and so on, couldn't give me anything that beats this because this is to the street, and this is, this is very for real, you know? I'm the, I'm, 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 I'm the, I'm the, I'm the okay, okay. that coined the phrase hip hop. Okay. 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 A lot of these cats that's holding these cameras don't even know who the f I am until I say my name, okay. or do they, or they hear B I G right, right. say my name. Okay. So you know, it's a big commodity going on. I'm not gonna be a part of that. Exactly. I don't do interviews exactly. and I don't do exactly. stories exactly. unless you paying me. You know, because when I first started it, with nothing but love. Right. Ain't no love in the game. There's a specific part that's kind of cut from the video where it's like literally Love Bug has like a drop the mic moment. And he's like, you know, I told you I don't do interviews, music choice. So what happened was uh, we, my crew, my producer and I were hired directly through Justo. Uh and Bobby Yan, who was doing video production for Justo at that time, he had hired my producer and my producer subsequently hired me for the gig to do interviews that night. He's talking about Music Choice because Music Choice had Mr. C, DJ Mr. C doing interviews and, they, and Justo had me doing interviews and we're like in the same space. So I guess he kind of seen the Music Choice signage and he just automatically assumed that we were all together, or I, or I was with Music Choice. I was raised on, you know, all the good culture of hip hop, man. I was a big mixtape fanatic. I'm the cat that's in the stores every Fridays, spending my last copy of mixtapes. I'm the dude that read every Source magazine, every Double XL magazine, every Blaze magazine that came out during that time. Like anything I could get my hands on regarding hip hop. I was reading it. So although Love Bug Starsky is not from my era necessarily, um, I still had knowledge of who he was. You know what I'm saying? I knew the live at the fever joint. You know what I'm saying? I knew the disco fever, you know, the spots that he that he made legendary. So I had knowledge of the brother. So I really looked up to him. So I was kind of hurt when he said what he said, because I'm like, I'm not really a part of the establishment. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a young cat on the come up doing this hosting. I hadn't even been hosting not even a year yet at, at that point. And I had already did, you know, two hours worth of interviews at that point. So this is the biggest night of my life. So I'm just trying to keep the energy good. And you kind of see the look on my face. I'm like, Whoa. ironically enough, that is the night when I made the connection through Keisha Scott, who worked for Music Choice. Shout out to Keish. And then a year later, I ended up being one of the first hosts slash co-host for the Music Choice Network. You know what I mean? So it was it was kind of bugged out how all of that came together. But at the time, I wasn't on any uh, major platform like that. I was doing lease access cable in New Jersey, and I had my own show called Where You At through my producer, Mike Sisti. I was one of those young heads that always acknowledged the older cats and always wanted to really um, soak myself up with that because I felt like that was so important for me, especially since... I really planned on making a career in hip hop through hip hop. I say I gotta know who who all of the, the the legends and the pioneers are, man. So it was it was it was it was it set me back a little bit. Now as soon as he said, "Thank you," or I don't I don't do interviews, music choice. My producer like was like, "Yo, fam, like we not with music choice. We're 
with the Mixtape Awards. Like, Justo hired us through Bobby Yan to be here tonight. We're with you, bro. Like, we we not with that industry stuff, man. Like, we're we're you know we're 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 down to earth. And that's when he came back and he kind of shook my hand, like, all right, fam, you know what I'm saying? My fault. Like, let's start this again. And that's when he did the the heartfelt drop to Justo. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Justo, I love you so very much. You know, we keep it real. We from the streets, my man. I will always cherish this. I'm Love Buck Starsky. You know where I come from, I know where you come from. We keeping it real. Forget this camera. I love you, my for life. When I heard the news, uh, and actually I found out the news through Instagram. I saw it on uh, Red Alert, DJ Red Alert's page, man. And, um, you know, the mark of, of somebody's impact, you know, like I said, Love Bug Starsky is not my era, but Biggie Smalls, a.k.a. Notorious B.I.G., that is the era. That's the 90s era that I grew up in. That said a lot to me. So I, I once that name was put out there, I had to do the research. So I, like I said, I was aware of who he was. But I wondered why he was so upset. I did. And then the day he passed, man, to see the outpouring of, like I said, legends that I look up to. You know what I'm saying? Legends that I've worked with. You know, I, I you know, I work with Red Alert at Hot. You know what I'm saying? Chuck Chill Out at BLS. To see these types of guys pouring out the tributes. You know what I'm saying? That like the words that they typed in regards to Love Buck Starsky, it really touched me. I saw a post by Grandmaster Flash that that really touched my heart. Shout out to um Scratchmaster Jazzy G. You know, he put out a post. Like these are all legendary DJs and fixtures of our culture, man. And to see them in that place of 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 pain, man, it, it it really did something for me. So I was like, dang, you know, this this is really really serious, man. Um, this is a tremendous loss. I do not want this man's death to be in vain, man. His memory, his contributions to be in vain. So I saw Roxanne Shantae's tribute, and basically what she was saying, and and she talked about why people thought that Love Bug was angry, and I thought it was so profound what she said because like. Our experience, my interview experience with him, the minute he kind of said what he said, I was like, why is this man so angry? But when I saw Roxanne Shantae's post, it kind of all brought it back home for me. Love Bug Starsky has passed away. And I'm really, really hurt about that. Now, I'm not a person who gets on social media and cries and, and vents and goes through all those things because I don't, you know, I get on here and I try to keep it positive and I try to keep all of the good things going and I try to be motivational and everything else. But let me just tell y'all something. You know, a lot of people had the wrong idea about Love Bug Starsky. A lot of them didn't really know Love Bug. My relationship with Love Bug was very good. Me and Love Bug were very close. We talked on the phone all the time. And, and I remember when he made that move to Vegas and when he said, like, you know what, Shani, like, I'm not coming back to New York. These things, you don't even understand what's going on, Shani, and how things are. And I'm going to tell you, you know, when it came to this hip hop, Love Bug, Love Bug was one of the first people to even to call it hip hop. And yet, people would say, Shani, you know what? Love Bug is so angry. He's so mad. He's so angry all the time. He's so disrespectful. He's so this. But Love Bug had a reason to be angry. Love Bug had a reason to be angry. He had the idea of Love Bug. Let me. Love Bug came from an era. See, a lot of people are people who have came here from from day one, and then you have came here from the night before i'm a night before but then you had those who came the day before that and i'm gonna tell you those people there that that whole generation that whole era that love bug come from love bug came from an era where mixtapes was 50 dollars mixtapes was 50 dollars to get a mixtape was fifty dollars not five dollars not copied by nobody none of that it was fifty dollars to get your name on a mixtape cost you a couple of hundred dollars if they was popping if it was a hot dj just to get them to mention your name on a mixtape was a couple of hundred dollars but the tape itself was 50 and you will be able to buy them from record stores. That's where you bought them from. You bought them from record stores. These Kid Capris and Love Bug Starskys and Brucey e. B's. 
you know, they were able to do shows, and what would they get? They were getting like $10,000 just to DJ, because at that time, it was the 80s, and the hustlers had that type of money, so it was nothing to throw a birthday party and say, you know what, I want Love Bug Starsky to DJ my birthday party and give him 10 stacks for that. So you can't get angry at him for him looking at you wanting to offer him $200 to DJ or $150 to DJ so he had a right to be angry he had a reason to be mad he had a right to feel the way he felt because no one knew what the true value or the worth was so when he walked in a place and he was angry and people be like yo shiny go and talk to love bug or old here come love bug star ski he was one of those people that was very difficult to deal with no he wasn't he was an old school who knew his fucking worth and if many more old school people knew their worth then we wouldn't have old school artists out here now trying to figure out how they gonna eat doing full shows for 250 dollars doing shows for 500 dollars going out here and making a mockery of a craft that now people are making billions of dollars from billions of dollars from you can't get mad at a man for knowing his worth for walking in a party and saying listen don't say my name unless you pay me don't put me on your flyer unless you pay me don't invite me to your party and think i'm gonna be happy to just be at your party and drink don't don't think you can't be angry at a man for that nor can you be mad at his anger or for him knowing what his worth is for him knowing what his worth is if more old school artists would have had the same attitude as love bug starsky they wouldn't be up now they wouldn't be they wouldn't be. He came from an era where people were forcing drugs and things on you in order to keep you messed up so that you wouldn't take care of your contract. You wouldn't take care of your paperwork. When you got to the point of them thinking that what you needed and what you wanted was drugs or, or they could be able to, to, to take stuff from you, you can't be mad at Love Bug Starsky for that. And a lot of people had the wrong idea about it. So for me to turn my phone on and see that Love Bug Starsky had passed away and I seen all these pictures coming up in my timeline, I was I'm really hurt. I'm really hurt because I know that hip hop did not do him right and people did not do him right. Promoters did not do him right. And I said that when he was alive and may I may have been one of the only people that when he came in a party, I'd be the first person to go over there to him and say, you good, you all right? He said, yeah, I'm good, I'm all right. I just can't take being around these phony and I don't blame him at all. Love bug, may you rest in peace and may it be a great party wherever you are right now because if you are DJing I know it is please believe that and y'all have a good night so Roxanne she said what she said you know and it was it, it's true man like I get the feeling you know that this man's contributions were not appreciated as much as they should have been while he was here um and now we have a whole new generation right so one of the one of the things that I hear about nowadays that people talking about in terms of hip hop and rap music is um, forget the just the musical aspect, but the people that are in control of hip hop, the people that are running hip hop, the people that are putting people on. You hear the word culture vulture. You hear like people that don't really respect the foundation. They don't respect the roots. They just it's a it's a basic a money grab for people. They don't really care about the pioneers. They don't care about, you know, the, the, the foundation that was laid. They just want to make their money off the culture. OK. And more and more people are having a problem with that because let's let's be real. Like the content that we see now from the interviews that, that are out there, from the music that's being put out there, the bar has been lowered. All right. Let's just keep it real. It's been watered down. All right. But I feel like there is a very teachable moment throughout all of this. And when I say that. Love bugs, death should not be taken in vain. There was an obvious disconnect between the older generation and the younger generation. And I feel like I'm in between that. I'm not old enough to be an OG and I'm not young enough to be a YG. You feel me? But I'm saying to myself, like, what can we do? How can we make this a teachable moment? I do not want this to just be a blurb that, you know, Love Bug Starsky is gone and people do their rest in pieces and then that's just it. Nah, man, people really need to be doing their homework and doing their research because that's what I did. When I left the Mixtape Awards that night, the next day when I woke up, that encounter with Love Bug, it stuck with me because it was 
it just was like, wow, what, what, what happened? So I went on the internet and I did as much research as I could. And sure enough, there wasn't a lot of interviews. He really didn't do a lot of interviews. He wanted to be compensated for what he put together. And a lot of people will say, well, that's why should he get paid? But look at it. Hip hop is turned into a billion dollar industry. Okay. And we already kind of spoke about the fact that a lot of people that are involved in this business are not in it for good intentions. They're not in it to uplift our communities. They're not in it to continue delivering the same message. Hip hop came out of oppression. Okay. Hip hop was, was, was passion. Hip hop was love. Hip hop was, it was you. It was literally in you. And a lot of the pioneers like Lovebug, Starsky, they came up off the strength of, yo, this is what we love to do. This is the love that we have. And that's what he said. He said, it's no love no more in the game, man. And it turned into this billion dollar industry from blood, sweat and tears that these brothers and sisters put out. They put their life on the line for hip hop, literally back then. You understand what I'm saying? So for them not to eat off of it, it's a travesty, man. So like all the big media outlets that are out there today, you know, Y'all got a responsibility in my eyes, you know what I'm saying, to really um, put the pioneers, you know, messages and things that they say. You know, you can mix up the, the, the new stuff, I should say, but it should also be a balance. It should, it should be, you know, a piece of the culture, you know, should be embedded in everything that's going on. Make your money, but still pay homage. One of the worst words that came into our vocabulary with the younger generation nowadays is irrelevant. Everything's irrelevant. People only do things because they are relevant. People only saying things because they are relevant. They're trying to get clout. They're trying to get shine. Man, let me tell you something, yo. Knowledge can never be irrelevant. The history of hip hop can never be irrelevant, man, because without that foundation, the whole thing will topple over. Look what's look what happened to other genres of music. And I always believe it's because we do we don't people don't respect the history. People don't appreciate the pioneers. People don't want to listen to the wisdom that's being spit out. You don't have to agree with every single thing that the old heads is talking about, but you could at least have enough respect to at least hear them out sometime, man. We don't even want to do that. We so quick to just brush everything off as irrelevant. This is irrelevant, that's irrelevant. Take some time to do some research on the culture. Don't be so quick to just write somebody off as old and flabby as sick because they're not 21 anymore. You know, that's crazy. Where do we get to the point where we disrespect knowledge? That's how we grow as a people. Without knowledge, we're stagnated. We can't move. We can't do anything. So I feel like we need to get back to that. So as an educator, you know, I've learned some of the things that um, frustrates me working with young people and I see some of the same frustrations that older heads saw when I was young, you know what I'm saying, dealing with me, you know what I mean, so it's like every generation has that, like I'm, I grew up in the 90s, but to my cousin that grew up in the late 70s, early 80s was a part of hip hop from the very foundation the rappers in the 90s wasn't saying nothing to him, you feel what I'm saying and that's how we feel sort of like now with the younger cats coming out so it's like that revolving door. But for the older heads, I also say this. Y'all got to exhibit some patience too with the young cats. You know, you don't like their music. You don't like their artists. You don't like their slang. But it was a time where when hip hop first came out, the R&B artists of that era used to like, you know, they used to hate on hip hop. They said, this is not real music. Hip hop ain't real music. You know what I'm saying? So the, the, the people that were involved with the culture back then, they felt some type of way because the R&B, the soul, the disco cats weren't embracing them. You know, so I tell the older cats, remember what it was back when hip hop was brand new and the older cats of your generation didn't embrace you because they thought hip hop wasn't a respectable genre of music. Think about what you went through at that time. So let's flip it back now and say to our young people, yeah, you know, some of the music that y'all making, it's not the quality of what I grew up on. But at the same time, there should be an exchange. There should be an exchange where it's like we could learn from them, they could learn from us. And I feel like, you know, with the passing of Love Bug, this is now the opportunity for people to actually do that, you know? 
Don't let this man's passing be in vain. Like I said, to all of the bigger outlets that are out there, man, it, 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 it's a cultural responsibility to make sure that you ingrain the foundation of the elements of hip-hop, what made hip-hop a billion-dollar culture. I feel it's like it's a responsibility. And if you need help with that, holler at me. I'm being honest with y'all, man. I'm able to see both sides of the fence. And I am an educator and I'm an entertainer. I worked in entertainment and I worked in education. So I always, like, that was my whole dream. Like, I really want to be able to bridge the gap. And I feel like it's kind of like that moment, that light bulb that went off. Like, yo, this is one of those moments where we could pay homage and we could honor the contributions of Love Bug Starsky and pioneers just like him. Really show people what this hip-hop is all about. Really show people, you know. Um, yes, it's a business. Yes, billions of million dollars are going to be made. Yes, but... You don't knock down the foundation and expect the house to still stand. And the house is 2018, hip-hop in 2018. You can't knock out that foundation and expect the culture to continue to grow because it's not. So to the young people, I'm embracing y'all, man. I mean, I work at Hot 97 and WBLS. They'll tell you, all my younger co-workers, I'm inspired by them. You know what I'm saying? I'm not walking around with the old head vibes like, you know, nah, bro. I embrace that because... When I was in my 20s, all right, there was older heads that embraced me and gave me opportunity. So I do the same for my younger co-workers and, and younger people just in, in general in my classrooms. You know, I, I give my, my kids the opportunity to, to make mistakes. There's certain things they don't know. I can't get frustrated with them. I got to show patience. I got to work with them. So I feel like there has to be a balance. Let's bring this together because if we airtight this up, then as y'all say, the culture vultures... They can't come in. And and the culture vulture to me, it's not about race. It's not about gender. <laughs> it's not about age. It's just about people that are coming into um, the element of what we created and really just trying to just take, 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 take. And they just don't care. It's just a straight money grab. So if you want to keep the money grabbers not paying homage to the originators out of our culture... The young and the old and the middle ground, which I consider myself to be, we're going to really have to start coming together. We're going to really have to start putting our differences to the side or our culture as we know it is going to collapse. My condolences and my love goes out to um, the family, the friends and the fans of Love Bug Starsky, man. You will be missed, my brother. And thank you for educating me. Thank you. Peace. Yeah!